Hi, my name is Sherry Sloan. I am a veteran teacher and a um, digital media arts and communications instructor and enthusiast. So um, my job here today is to show you how to use Canvas, which is a learning management system, and it's by a company called Instructure. If you are um, familiar with Google Classroom, this is similar, but way, way, way more robust. Um, I'm not going to show you every single bell and whistle. I'm going to show you enough to get you started, get you by, show you how to get more help. Um, but I'll be giving you a series of videos showing you how to use Canvas by Instructure. So on this screen here, you will see um, a typical sign-on page. If you note in the URL up here, you will see that um, this is where you would um, type in canvas.instructure.com. We're going to click over here where it says need a Canvas account. It's free. And right here is where you select that you're a teacher. So then it will ask you for your um, email address and asks you what type of account you have. You do not have to have an email address that's associated with a school or anything. Just put whatever email address you normally get. It might ask you for you to um, verify your email. I'm not going to do that right now because I already have an account. But that would be your next step is to go ahead and create your account. Now today I'm going to show you an overview of what Canvas is and does and through this overview um, sort of give you a couple pointers but in the very next video I will show you how to build a classroom. So um, let's start by just seeing what our dashboard looks like. This is our first page. You see I have six courses here. Um, I haven't taught these in several years as you see. Um, I did use Canvas. Uh, I've used it for about seven years total, uh, excluding the last two years where I had to use Google Classroom. So I know both very well. So this front screen here, uh, if you look off to the left, I'm just going to describe what's on, what you see on your screen. Off to the left is your account. That's, you know, you can change your profile picture. You can do several things with your account um, and uh, certain account settings. Um, what kind of notifications you want. You can get notifications right to your phone. You don't have to if you don't want to, but this is where you would set all of that up. Um, and then your dashboard is where we are right now. Uh, your courses uh, are the courses that you're teaching. Your calendar, as you fill up due dates and such, your calendars will fill up. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, inbox is where you will communicate with your students if you choose to. Um, and again, you can have those notifications as well. Um, I haven't used much with history, but I assume it remembers a revision history with that. I don't use the commons, but um, if you are a teacher of um, relatively common subject areas, I believe in the commons, you will find um, modules already created for you. Um, and then in the help area, this is where you would find further help. Um, if I come off to the right, we will click that in a few minutes to start a new course. Uh, this is where I would view the grades for my courses. If I'm a student, I'd be uh, seeing my student grade. And then um, also up here, see where it says nothing for the next week? Up there, it would show you um, what assignments need to be graded. So if someone turned in something, you'll see right there, oh, someone turned in a quiz. You need to you know, check it out or well, quizzes grade themselves, some of them. Um, or if you, it'll tell you what's coming up, um, like um, Project 3 is, is due on Tuesday. And it will let you know as a teacher, so you can sort of keep that in mind. But it gives you a nice list of things um, to keep in mind for the next week. Now, each of these represents a course that I'm teaching. This is obviously old. And each one of these sort of squares, they call them cards, has some options here as well. So if I click here... I can change some colors, um, I can move them in position, and up here <clears throat> I can decide what I want, well first of all, what I want on my dashboard. This recent activity, I can put that there, that's you know when students turn things in, etc. I can have that be my front page. I like the cards, um, it helps me. And this cover overlay, sometimes um, 
Uh, sometimes I like doing that, sometimes I don't, but you'll see that you can insert a picture there and then I do have the cover overlays going on, so that's why I have them also color coded. If I turn off cover overlay, it's just pictures, which is totally fine also. Okay, so next um, I want to show you, let's get into one of the courses and see what it looks like. Okay, so we're going to explore this um, DMAC Marking Period 4 class. I'm just showing you a class that's already built and you'll see that I have unit 1, unit 2, unit 3, and unit 4. Um, that's how I do my modules. Some people do them by you know week 1, week 2, week 3. You can totally organize it that way. Um, you decide how you want to organize your classroom. You can also have the students move through your items in a sequential order. So which means that they first have to um, get a 70% or higher on a quiz before they can move on to the next assignment. Um, you can have it where they can take the quiz over and over again to achieve that 70%. Um, there's various things that you can do to set it up. I'll get more into that as we build the course, but those options would be over near these dots and then you click on edit and you'll see more about moving through sequential order, what they have to do first in order to do the next thing, um, if you want a prerequisite for this unit, meaning they have to finish unit one first before beginning unit two, that this is where you would access all of that. So, um, so as you see, I have the units in the middle. Let's look off to the left first though. At the top, this is a breadcrumb trail. So as um, you can always get back to this page right here by clicking on DMAC marking period four modules. Um, I have modules set as my front page. You don't have to have your setup like this. For my students, it worked better. Um, I had younger students. So, um, but you can have your front page say, Miss Sloan's classroom and have a cute picture there, whatever you want. Um, I set it up where their front page is the modules, but you can change that setting also. Um, and then so off to the left now, we see all of these things. But look at all the eyeballs with the um, blind thing on it. What this means is that everything to the left I have access to, but the students can't see anything, any of those tabs that do not have an eyeball. So they only that have an eyeball. Anyway, the ones that are blind, they can't see. <laughs> Um, so as you see, they only have access to the top um, ones there, and of course the bottom ones are mine. So speaking of what the students can see, if you look off to the top right, you will see that there is a student view. I'll show you that in a couple minutes, but that is where you would access student view, meaning what does my course look like to a student who's jumping on? And this is where you would see what they see. Um, here, in, import existing content. Um, that works from um, if you are teaching one class and you have something super similar, like let's say an introductory slideshow with quiz, like I do, um, then the students uh, can take that quiz um, and you might want that for the class you teach second semester also. So in that case, you would import existing content, you would import that quiz, you don't have to make the questions all over again, you just grab that. Import from the commons. Again, if you teach a common area subject, there might be some lessons in the commons that are free that you want. Um, that is where you'd find them. Choose your home page. That is where I told you that you could have your home page be your modules like mine is, or you can have your home page be whatever you want. Um, they would still have the modules tab off to the left. As you see, there's a modules tab there. Uh, view course stream. This is if you um, allow discussions. I generally don't. Um, if you have a new announcement to make, this would wind up in their stream. I can't remember where that appears for the students. Um, I didn't use these things that much, but view course notifications, again, if you want your phone to be notified or email for certain interactions that students have. Um, now, and of course, there is a calendar, which you also have off to the left. You'll notice that in Canvas, like most software, there's lots of ways to do the same thing. That's one example right there. So let's look at what it can do. So if I go into my quiz one, and by the way, it can do a lot. And this is my disclaimer right now. I don't know how to do everything. I know how to do a lot with it, 
but I don't know how to do everything. It's integrated with a lot of fun software that you might already use. So um, I'll, I'll show you where to access that in a few minutes. Um, and uh, I can't remember what the third one was. So quiz one, let's look at it. As I told you, I do an introductory quiz. Um, you can, my students know that it's 40 points. It's a graded quiz. Um, I've decided to shuffle the answers. So if they're taking it side by side, um, they, you know, they, they can't really look at each other's work too easily. So you'll see all of these are settings that I can do with each quiz. Now I am the person who's generating this quiz, so I can go ahead and preview my quiz. I'm going to go ahead and preview it. You see there's quiz statistics off to the right and everything. You'll see that I can I'll go ahead and take my quiz. You'll see it's starting to time me. And at the top, I chose to include a slideshow. You can include a video to watch. You can include nothing. You can include text. Continuing down, um, you'll see that I have these various questions. And as a teacher, or I'm sorry, as a person previewing, I can go ahead and just, I'm going to answer some randomly here. But I want you to see how something changed. If I go back up to the top, I can see that I answered four questions. I can see that there are 25 questions altogether, and I can jump to any question I want to as the student also. So this is one I tried, <laughs> not with much success. Oh, here's a cool one. You can see what a quiz question might look like. You can include images in your quiz questions. So hey, uh, the marking is printed over an image. Define, what are those? They are watermarks. So you can have various kinds of questions. Um, I can make some that are super big. There's more with images. Okay, so that is a quiz. Now, I, am, I can keep editing the quiz or I can submit my quiz. Now, it's telling me you did not finish, but do you want to still have it graded? Yep, I'm done. I quit. I want to see what my grade is. But it shows you that I got all those wrong and I stopped answering the questions. Okay, so let's go back to my modules, which I can get to here or here or here because I set my home page up that way. And that is a quiz. Now, I told you before I would show you the student view. So let me go ahead and show you student view. So in student view, you'll see that um, I'm now called test student. I can do things as the student. I can, um, this is how I demonstrate to my students uh, how to do certain things in Canvas. So um, as you'll see, I've set this module up where the student must complete all the items. And I can see from my check mark as a student that I did. I'm also supposed to complete all my items here. And I can see that I did not. So I would go down to my next item that I need to complete. This is design your own logo. And of course, you can put links in here. Um, you can uh, put videos in there. Yes, there are rubrics. Yes, you can reuse the rubrics. Um, to grade their rubric, I just, well, I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, and I can click here and put the assignment in as a student. I've never seen start assignment. Oh yeah, so here, oh, that's new. They can use their webcam to answer, that's cool. Um, but here's where they would upload a file. They can add more files. So with mine, they'd be uploading a file. Any comments they want to leave to me, they can leave. Let me just um, upload a file. Choose file. So I can grab a random thing. Oh, 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 that's because, oh, I, I, I put the settings that they could only upload a PNG because that's what I needed for this project. That's something you can't do in Google Classroom. Okay, and I would go ahead and submit the assignment if I was done, which I am obviously not. But I can also leave a comment to my teacher that is a private comment. All right, so next I'm going to leave student view. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me go into grades. 
So <clears throat> as a student, I not only know what my current grade is in this class, and right now my current grade is a 66%. I can also see that what my teacher left for comments for me, there's my teacher comment, and my teacher left me a PDF. So this is something else that you can do in Canvas. I can go ahead and open the PDF that my teacher left me, and if I, if I hover over the annotations, you see these little things here? I can see um, what my teacher had to say. Looks like I only have one on there. So that is another thing that um, Canvas can do. So, um, so as the, the student, I'm like, boy, 66%, I'm passing. But you know what? I don't want to do this design my own logo thing. I want to blow this assignment off. I want to know if I'm going to fail if I blow this assignment off. So what I'm going to do is, as a student, I'm going to go ahead and enter a zero into my grade book. And let's see how that affects my grade. Oops, I didn't want to enter that zero yet. Not what I did anyway. Hold on, let me revert that one. Okay, so I put a zero into my grade book. I went down to a 56%. Okay, well, if I do the other two assignments, will it raise it enough to get me above a D? Let's find out. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put in a 25, because I'm going to get a perfect grade on that, and I'm going to get a perfect grade on this. Will that bring me above the D? And you'll see I'm a 61%. So if I blow off this assignment here, I'm going to fail. Did I just change Ms. Sloan's gradebook? Nope. These are called what-if scores. So I can revert to my actual score, and there it is again as the, as the student. I'm going to leave the student view. And now I want to show you what grades look like for the teacher. So if I come over here to grades, you'll see that I have a big old grade book laid out. Um, and what I like about this uh, grade book is if I come, oh, I already did it. So see how total is right up front? You can make it where their total grade is right up front next to their name. You can change the order of these columns. You can sort them by lowest to highest. But what I like to do is I, you know, to see who your zeros are, I like to um, sort them from highest to lowest, and then I take a screenshot of my B or higher club, I call it, and um, I like to post their names up as um, people who are passing my class. So, um, oh, passing it well. So um, that's the grade book. Uh, and you can set that up for weighted grades as well. I don't do weighted grades, um, but you can set it up for weighted grades as well. Um, and, you know, that's really everything that I'll be showing you as far as what you can do. There's so much more that you can do with Canvas. Um, maybe as we get further into the year, I'll show you more and more things, especially when it comes to integrating with things like Edpuzzle. Um, uh, but I will uh, continue to make videos. Uh, be ready for the next one. And the next one, um, we will be building your class. So get your unit stuff together and let's build a class. See you soon.